Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin mazurkas. Today I have for you mazurka in A flat major, opus 59, number 2. With this mazurka, uh, there is a very charming story linked. At the end of the year 1844, Chopin received a very interesting letter. Now I quote this letter. My dear Chopin, this letter comes to you to ask a favor. Would you, out of friendship, write a few bars of music, sign your name at the bottom to show you wrote them for my wife and send them to me? It was at Frankfurt that we last met, when we last met you and I was then engaged. Since that time, whenever I wish to give my wife a great pleasure, I have to play to her and her favorite works written by you. And who wrote this letter? Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdy. Yes, my dear friends, Felix Mendelssohn Bartholdy his wife was in love with Chopin's music, like all the world. And indeed, many, many, many months later, Chopin realized this request. He wrote uh, a short piece and sent to Mendelssohn as a gift for his wife. This was a dedication, special dedication. And with what kind of music she wrote? Um, this one. Yes, very charming, very warm, very sweet melody. And of course, a Polish folk dance. Um, we, it's, it's a kind of Kujawiak. Uh, it should not be played too fast uh, because we don't have too many dotted rhythms only at the end of the phrase, but in general, it sounds a very like Kujawiak, so slower dance, waving dance with circles. Um, but of course we can analyze this melody. It, it's uh, very interestingly composed. Uh, I'm talking about the phrases now, but I want also to share with you my feelings and my philosophy towards this piece. Well, that's the, the main reason why I'm recording these videos, uh, because uh, they I want them to be subjective. Of course, what I'm saying is my own feelings that, and uh, fruits of, um, well, many, many days, weeks of, or months even of thinking, analyzing and trying to get very deeply into the music. And here we have the very sweet surface of this melody uh, which is so nice to listen to, but I also can I can see here deeply inside something something more. What is it? Well, a dialogue. I feel and I, I hear in this mazurka 
practically in the whole mazurka, a dialogue. But this dialogue is very special because it's not really like a dialogue between two people, but it's like the inner dialogue of one person. It's like, you know, Robert Schumann, he was, <laughs> there were two, two people inside of him. Uh, Florestan and Eusebius, right? And here we have a little bit something like that, but I think that's that comes from the fact that at that time when Chopin composed this piece, he had a mixture of very different feelings inside. A tragedy of the death of his father, but also a pure happiness of the visit of his sister in Paris. And many, many things uh, were put together. So here for me it's like a dialogue and now i just want to explain for you uh, where i exactly hear the dialogue here the first person starts and then the second person repeats and the first person is listening on it so the first person again and then again the second and then from here we have something else one person is saying it's a very beautiful phrase and the second person is answering no this is like no. And then again. And then no. And then again. Like it like the request and then saying no, right? It's a little bit like Mendelssohn is asking Chopin. Chopin probably had a lot of such such requests. I, I I'm sure about it. Many people wanted Chopin to write a piece of music for their wives, their mothers, they who, well, who, whoever knows what, who. But anyway, um, of course, and now I'm joking, but seriously speaking, this is like a dialogue. Uh, to make it a little bit more clear, I, I will now play this, the two people in two different parts of the keyboard. bit complicated to play like this but anyway it sounds a little bit awkward I must admit but it's just to show you uh, this these two people and the dialogue between them um, because how exactly it's written um, if we take the first phrase we have and then the second phrase starts exactly the same But then the ending is different. And then again, starts the same. It's like the first phrase, except the last note, which is different. And then the last, again the same. And then the ending. One time, second, and third. Okay, and what's how how I can work on it? Because I think this is also very interesting. How the pianist can improve this these phrases? First of all, we need to have that kind of Polish spirit with the the left hand, but also not too much because it's a kujawiak, so it is more like it's a slow dance, and the melody is very uh, cantabile. It's like the singer, like beautiful soprano is singing. So now I try to just play it as beautifully as the singer could possibly sing this.
it brings us to the point when we have again the same melody as the beginning but in two voices structure and a forte so very loud um, so this gives the pianist the endless endless ideas I think of how to how to open the phrase how to close the phrase what kind of legato what kind of dynamic there are many ways to play I try to play in a different way now What is important also here is to differentiate these two people if of course for me if i want to um, underline the the dialogue then i need to change the touch and i need to to use two different way of touching the keyboard to differentiate two two persons first time let's say a little deep deeper a little deeper touch and here different Again, the first person. And again, second. Now I think you can you can hear this music. It's like a three D music. Now we have to dancing. B where the dialogue continues now let's listen the first person and now the second and again the first then the second and the second finally managed to get out of I don't know the prison and go in outside to freedom it sounds a little bit like this that they are trying to get out but they cannot let's listen again okay second time third time and then fourth time Finally, right? So I think it's very clear this dialogue here. And now the dialogue continues. Listen, uh, person number one, person number two, person number one, person number two. come to the very important moment when the melody from the beginning is in the left hand do you remember if you listened to my episode from last week about the first mazurka in this opus I talked about it that this is the thing the DNA of the whole opus the thing that we appears that appears in all three mazurkas in this opus when suddenly the left hand has the melody of the, the 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 initial melody the first melody it's like a ghost of a father as i said in a very poetic way here we have exactly the same and it sounds here a little different because we didn't have the dotted rhythm before we had so more like we have like here we have the dotted rhythm which makes it sounds like a mazur
the dialogue. And the second. And the first. And the second. And the first. And the second. That's the end of the mazurka. So the last page is a little bit complicated, but still we have the dialogue. But it starts from building up the energy and then releasing this energy by the chromatic chromatically going down. And I think that in this part uh, it's very good idea to just let it go, to just play it faster and don't focus so much on every detail because it's there are too many details and also we have this beautiful melody afterwards so it's better to focus on this melody afterwards and here just make like the you know the balloon when you put the air inside the balloon and then the air goes down though goes away from the balloon so let's try to listen to this here we are building energy and from here we going down beautiful di dialogue second first and the second and the second in minor then major and then another and the absolutely magic ending when we have like Mendelssohn music many elves, many, uh, some magic, uh, some, some, some magic creatures from the other world just flying or like butterflies, you know. I think here also it's a challenge for a pianist to have a very delicate touch, but very precise touch in a fast tempo. Um, Everything ends with the fall group, pam, 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 almost as if we want to open the new. Number three uh, in this opus, right? It's almost, it's, it's like a connection. So this, just listen again to this magic ending. That's it. When, and I think we don't need to talk more about this because, um, in my opinion, that's 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 what I see in this mazurka. It's very charming. It's very, it creates a very good energy. Uh, the public loves this this music because it's quite easy to absorb. But still, it's a very late Chopin. Um, I don't think Chopin is really experimenting in this in this piece. Um, He's just composing a beautiful music. Thanks for watching and see you again next week. We go to the next one that I just played a little bit for you. Take care and bye bye.